and land and regalia. Come and get you from the safety and the sanctuary of my beloved cousin Laurie's estate here in North Carolina. At the time of this recording, it is Friday, 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 February 16th, 2024. And then, yeah, I just did done a video a moment or two ago, and so I'm following it up with a different topic. And uh, this topic is about manifesting. And then, so, um, I just wanted to touch base here for a moment or two because I uh, talk about manifesting from my particular standpoint. And um, instead of uh, explaining my whole journey, I'm just going to summarize. Um, <laughs> and I'll expand on it another time. I've touched up on it in, you know, other videos in the past. But uh, suffice enough to say, whenever I was in Houston and um, the uh, gang stalking, the torments, the abuse had uh, leveled up its um, ugly ass to me, you know, in like, see on a scale of one to 10, it was motherfucker, probably about a seven at the time. And then of course it went up to eight and nine and then, you know, 10, you know, with the directed energy weapons when I culminating into when I called the police, you know, I just couldn't take it anymore. And they're like, gang stalking. Yes, I was gaslighted by the police who, you know, whatever. And then so, but nonetheless, that time, um, I would say it was probably around uh, 2020, I'll say, I'll, I'll ballpark it about April. And then so I, to me, the best way I knew uh, how to get out of the gang stalking was to actually manifest my way out of it. And so my first question to myself was, is manifesting an authentic, an authentic, um, an authentic uh, being? Was it possible? That's all I needed to know. It was this real. Was this possible? And then so, you know, I did my conclusive uh, research and then um, when I was able to answer that for myself, that it was, then I'm like, all bets are off. I took off my gauntlets and I'm like, motherfucker, I'm going to figure this out. And then so I've been doing my own practices of the manifesting along the way and picking up, you know, advice from others along the way and interspersing it into my journey. And then... Um, Whenever I left Houston, I had this very visceral moment where I had to roll down the uh, garage, the storage door to my storage I had over there. And I remember, you know, putting my hand on that door. I'm like, I'm coming back. I'm going to come back and get my stuff. And um, I'll never forget it because I locked that moment in, in time and I made a pact with myself. I was never going to be fearful. And then if I left and I stepped out on my leap of faith, I knew that every single step of my journey that the most high had my back. And then so I've kept that, I've kept that, kept that word with me. And then from there, uh, as of today's date, February 16th, 2024, I, um, <laughs> I'm not the same person that had, uh, Close that, roll that storage down, and I still expect to come back, and I still expect my belongings to be returned to. No, whether or not they do, that's on the ops, because that is their head. But nonetheless, um, has the manifesting work? Yes, it has. <laughs> you know, but my manifestation went along like this. You know, that uh, I expected to be the fairy, I expected to be the historical iconic legend in my own time. You know, because some people become iconic legends after they've passed. I'm like, that's not for me. When I am an iconic legend, it's going to be within my own time. And that uh, basically, um, I'm not going to disclose the amounts that I, you know, expect <laughs> to have procured. But, but, you know, it was like, 
I wanted the fairy tale. I wanted the romance. I mean, I wasn't really focused on the romance, really per se, but I threw that in there. <laughs> fairy tale iconic legend within my own time, <laughs> who helped to single handedly bring down the gang stalking because it wasn't just my in, my innovation to expect to um, rise above and conquer the gang stalking. I wanted an end to the gang stalking altogether, abolishment, and I'm still. You know, you know, uh, manifesting that, putting my energy towards it as prescribed by certain uh, manifestation prescriptions. <laughs> but I will say this, that I know that my manifesting has come to fruition and the way that uh, the Most High is orchestrating it. Now, I ever since I rolled that storage uh, door down in Houston to where I am now, me uh, having grown from it, but I, I've every every inch of my journey. I have decided to um, roll with the punches. It wasn't. I never. I never asked. I never asked why me. Why me. Why me. I never did that. It was never an issue of why me, because in the back of my mind, I've heard others say, "Well, why not you?" <laughs> that wasn't for me to figure out. My job was to dig my heels in deep. And to um, do what I knew to, you know, manifest, to be faithful to um, to the most high. Because as I saw it, my job was to maintain my joy at all costs. And it was not my job to figure out how um, the universe was going to romance my gestation of my manifestations. I was my job just to be in happy expectation of it, you know, and... And just allow myself to be, you know, romanced by the universe. <laughs> I used, uh, um, uh, what is it? Um, I studied, listened a lot to Abraham Hicks, as spoken by Esther Hicks, and Transurfing Reality, and um, interspersed pieces of my journey along the way. And then, so I know that is happening. <laughs> and um, I'm just, I'm not going to get into detail about any of it. And right now, the Afro Zen Adana, she's having a manifestation class right now. And, you know, I would be so, I learned a lot from her too. <laughs> and uh, I wish I'd do the class, but um, I'm, at this point, my manifestations are, are still on their way to me. <laughs> But big thanks to Teresa Kane, who actually, you know, had donated another, um, made another love donation to me that was unsolicited that I really appreciated, you know? And so, um, I tell you what, it's not my job to figure out how it's going to happen, but I will say this, that uh, my uh, ex-mother-in-law, Barbara Regali, she had been, when I say she had been FEMA's boo thing, she had been um, working for FEMA for I don't know how many years. But the, from, my, from my understanding, FEMA spearheads the goddamn gang stalking sacrifice circuit through the hands-on private surveillance companies and for Garden Citizen Corps, can research it on uh, targetedjustice.com. And then, you know, that's, that's the correlation that I have with that. But, you know, the funny thing is, is that when she threw me into the sacrifice circuit, of course, she fucking lied all over her face about it. <laughs> but then, you know, being a coven, they ain't got no fucking integrity. I mean, okay, when you're a gang stalker, you're basically broadcasting to the world. You ain't got no goddamn integrity. And you're a sadistic motherfucker who is willing to do whatever you can with throwing the rocks and hiding your hands with your goddamn backstabbing knives. <laughs> you're the kind of person people want to run from <laughs> me you're the kind of person I want to help elevate to give up the knife throwing you know because if we only love who others are like us what good are we we really you know I mean but it's an evolution it's an evolution it takes a while to get there, but if we set the milestones of, you know, what we could possibly aim for, you never know what kind of person you're going to be in another segment of your life, hopefully for the better. I wasn't always like, 
at the frequency I am now. <laughs> you know, I have my own evolution, so I have a lot of respect for the spectrum. And just because somebody's vibing low at that particular time, and even if you are throwing your goddamn rocks and hiding your goddamn backstabbing knives for me, I also hold the light for you to get right and hit reset, you know? Be the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter that come home, God damn it already. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it turns out I ended up manifesting an inheritance and a, um, and a house and a couple cars from I am my understanding and, uh, some stocks and bonds. And so I still don't know who it is that left it to me. I mean, me as a public servant, my specialty is the healthcare field. And so anything that's related to, to judicial, I'm so a fish out of water. That's why I'm like, guys, kick it up for another public servant already. You know, because I served during COVID while I was being tortured, melee for pay. My back was in it. And I was being horrifically tormented by the Zetsu Zone. And I still kept on keeping on. So, whatever. But I do happen to know that I did manifest that. And um, that's part of uh, God's uh, way of doing his billiard shot. Knocking out a bunch of fucking witches and shit. <laughs> because when you clicked on divine clickbait here, <laughs> you bought yourself into instant walking karma. So I, re I recognize my role in that and I'm very grateful for it. And so, but um, from the time I left Houston, uh, it was about April of, no, it's like March 2021. April 2021, somewhere in there. And somewhere right before that, um, Tim Regali has showed up with his, with his new, um, boo thing to, uh, have me sign divorce papers. So there ain't no way in hell that man would have signed divorce papers if he was trying to steal my inheritance at that time. So I know that the inheritance part must have cropped up sometime after I signed the, the divorce papers. So between me leaving Houston and now, I know that I had manifested that um, inheritance of mine. And then so I know that what God did... <laughs> So that's why I know I have it out there. I know that I have it out there. <laughs> and I know that I know what I know. <laughs> and I'm not turning up every a stone to get to it because I got to save my energy. I'm still being fucked with by those close to me. I can go to the grocery store. And uh, still see those fucking Nazis. And then once, in, you know, they'll still run their game. Whatever. So, I choose to love on myself, to maintain my joy. Because if I start spinning my wheels and start searching those shadows... That's really going to um, suck every, it's going to be anxiety. And then so this is where I have to depend on the other public servants to do their goddamn job. To be the mover and shaker. You know, be the mover and shaker, be not the mover and shaker. These are opportunities for you all to rise up and claim your name to fame. Or just take the cowardly way out. And miss an opportunity for yourselves. I see what's going on there. So that's on you guys. You know, you can help Zelda over here and rescue her into her lifestyle, into her inheritance. Because a lot of this funding that had been manifested to kill me with murder plots was with my own fucking inheritance. How do you like that for a fucking kick in the teeth? <laughs> Not to mention the radiation poisoning that everybody's like, she's a fucking crack method. I'm all like, you people are speaking out of your ass over here. That's dangerous. Um, 
for you Christians, you yappy Christians over there. What does the Bible say about the rudder of your life? That's R-U-D-D-E-R. -D -D -E That's your tongue. So if you are buying into fucking malign slander and propagating that, what you did was dig your own hole in your own grave because you're going to get your own fucking bitch face slapped with your own shit that you have flung at others. So whatever. But that's how I know my manifestations are, is out there. It's that I know. <laughs> and then, you know, what Abba's doing is giving other humans the opportunity to rise to the occasion and be a mover and shaker and do what is ethical instead of being unethical. So if you want to help divine clickbait, that's going to, those accolades will be spoken about for at least a century from now. My case is as big as Lizzie Borden's case ever was. I've said that respectfully in my previous videos. So just because my case hasn't hit the airwaves yet, doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And when it does, I'll be like, bitch, I told you. You should have done what was right because when I come into your life, I know on the surface what it looks like in the 3D, but in the 5D, I was somebody to help you get out of the grave you have already dug yourself into by presenting an opportunity for you to amend your life. While it looked like I was being helped in the 3D, this disposition was an, was an illusion in the 5D because what I came was to present to you a reward or punishment so or an opportunity. I mean, ask Dick Tracy number one. <laughs> he judged me for the struggle that I was railroaded into by his gang stalking affiliates. Never mind, I was a practicing paramedic in great standing. But, you know, you gang stalkers, you lying ass, bitch ass punks, you guys tear up people's reputations for a little something something because you got no goddamn integrity. I knew what you would do to my reputation as a paramedic, which is why I had to sacrifice it, amongst other reasons. So, whenever I cross your footsteps, make no mistake, if you slung your feces at me, what you did was seal your grave and your coffin. Because everybody participating in all of this, you guys are in eternal damnation, don't even know it. So I, I'm all like, I have a heart for you guys, even though you're a backstabbing team ass fucking Judas. Whatever. But whenever my avatar kicks out, when the good Lord decides it will, I know where I'm going to end up. In the land of milk and honey, you guys are slated for brimstone. Don't even know it. I mean, a lot of you do. Don't even care. It's on you. But I'm about the prodigal son and the prodigal daughter because I have a heart. But when I showed up, I, you were my assignment. It's all good. So, I know that what's ever happening to my case, just because you didn't help me and you thought you hindered me, never meant that you were more powerful than the Most High. My job was to maintain my joy, trust in the Most High, because at the end of the day, it's, heavy, it's a heavy judgment for everybody who just sat around and did nothing. And for those who enabled it and those who propagated it. So whatever, you all are guilty in Auschwitz and you get your demonic prizes, your zets or something. If you don't know what it is, well, 
fucking fight here. <laughs> I've been trying to teach you, buddy, for so long. Here, look it up. Z E T S E R S U N G Z S or something. That's the fucking playbook that the Stasi has you all running on your goddamn targets. <laughs> So if you don't know it, that's because you were supposed to not know it. So they could tool your fool ass and run you into the Zetzer song as a flying flunky monkey. <laughs> How do you think they keep the rotation going, bitches? <laughs> You're an easy mark then. Because you just hopped right into the frying pan and not even know it. Because that's the well-oiled machine it is. So whatever. Oh, there you go. I spoiled the playbook. What you want to do with it is up to you. Most of you will just do nothing and just keep vying for the never-ending dangling carrot. <laughs> Especially when the billion-dollar pinata is right there sitting right next to you. The time she goes to the grocery store, walks, and walks back, whatever. I have my own fucking truck. And you guys fucking destroyed it. The ops, whatever. Don't worry, you'll get a life and have to walk everywhere and get a life to where you're blackballed from employment and then get a life to where you have to depend on people who could be running your fool ass, tooling it for some fucking money. Maybe yes, maybe no. I could be just the universe playing out that way. Who fucking knows? So... My manifestations are there. It's just going to be a matter of the timing of divinity. And so whenever it does happen, it'll be like, oh, God damn, she was fucking right. Because right now there are people in Houston who know I'm fucking right, trying to fucking hide it. <laughs> I'm manifested that co-created with the most high. So your Zetzer song, that's on like, the Zetzer song is being Zetzer songed on the way out. <laughs> Your gang stalking is now officially crumbling around you. Your covens are being dismantled by the uh, 144K. Because, you know, I'm not the only divine clickbait here. There's 144,000 of us. <laughs> Give or take. So, 10 to 1, if you were dispatched to rail over somebody, they were divine clickbait. One of the 144K. Because the covens... Don't want the fucking 144K of, you know, God's, God's elect soldiers. I mean, we say we're chosen, but honestly, you can't steal our giftings because we were trained for this ever since we were in diapers. Our lives, we had to take on lots of beatings to chasten us. So if you think you can, like, take the giftings of another chosen one, what you're saying is, I want their giftings, and then you bought into a lot of pain and misery because it took a lot of miserable pain for us to get where we needed to be to love you fool-ass bitches. <laughs> for real, reals. So, I mean, this is me talking about my manifesting and how it's pertinent to me in my life because whenever the world um, is a uh, witness to my exaltation per the most hand, uh, uh, by the very hand of the most high, well, then everybody will see. I don't have to do anything. I just have to live ethically, maintain my... Um, my joy and my vibratory frequency here when fucking Charlie's trying to, you know, play, play in my face like a bitch ass punk. And I have to be like, I still love you. And really fucking believe that and mean it. I still love you. <laughs> but it took a lot of ass beatings to get here. <laughs> And so there is such thing as an anointing. If you are a team Judas and want to get your bitch ass life together, you have an opportunity to. I mean, there is an anointing for it, but it does include, and it's no more, I mean, it's the, at the very least, you have to go public with your apology, make YouTube videos, upload them to YouTube, Facebook, wherever. Uh, mm, publicize them and then make notarized statements of apology and what your part is in the Zetzer song and who you 
had been dealing with and then make registered letters and uh, mail them and go approach the appropriate authorities. That is the very least. If you cannot walk your talk, you're lukewarm and the Most High will spit you out right where you are. Because what you've been doing, talking to the ops, is you've been playing with people's lives. How many people have you railroaded into suicide already? How many times have you played your fool ass part in coming sideways at a fucking targeted individual? So if you think you're going to offer meaningless lip service like a pig of Babylon, there's no way you're going to find retribution in the burden of your karma. Because, I mean, again, I love and forgive all of you fool ass bitches. Wash my hands just like, you know, Pontius Pilate did. And endorse karma with, you know, full endorsement of karma in love. And pray for your prosperity, you know, to be alignment of divinity. Because if you can get there, the, um, the scales slough off your eyes, the snake skin, um, shed from your veneer, and you elevate yourself and everybody wins. But if you don't, that's your choice. Then I offer this to you. What good are you other than a fucking parasite that only helps somebody because you have a little something something in it to gain? What we want is to help elevate you to a level of altruism. And if you're not there, it's a good place to start the contemplation of it because you don't have to stay there. But if you choose to stay there, you have every right to. But just know each of you are worth more than that. Especially if you have the charge of guardianship over children. You know, but if that's the kind of parent you want to be, well, that is what you sow into the genetic disposition of each child that you are um, imprinting. And you will be held accountable by that by the Most High. And whenever it happens, let us know. So we can see and teach others. But I imagine it's like this freaking fuck by the universe but nonetheless that's my manifestation it's out there and I'm waiting for it to come to me already so I can you know kick it back and get working on my next phase in my life and give back to those who have given, who have given to me so but I love you guys peace out for now it's been Patricia Ann Landon Regali coming at you from my beloved cousin Lori's so beautiful estate and home out here in North Carolina. Bye.